Hi, in this video, I'll give you three easy steps to follow to create better painting as well as one pro tip while doing this skull study. Hey guys, David Bebo here from Paintable, uh, and today I'm coming at you with this video. It's a video uh, showing my step-by-step -step process when I did uh, this skull study. It's a skull study that I did for the uh, Paintable uh, Discord weekly challenge. If you want to participate, I'll put a link to the Discord in the description of this video. But for this uh, video, uh, I want to just start by saying that uh, what I'm showing is a speed painting here. Uh, and obviously I'm not going to teach much, but I have a few steps that I like to actually do when I do a study. Uh, and one of them is to uh, go find some references and have a few sketches to just warm up. So in this case, I went on uh, the Sketchfab uh, website, which is an amazing website. You have a ton of artists there putting their work uh, for sale. But what you can do is you can actually look at their work and because it's all rendering in 3D, you can rotate those rendering and find a better angle. And I was able to find a few skulls that were super interesting that I was able to place in a certain angle to make a few sketches. If you want to do a study before starting, I really suggest going on Sketchfab. It's always a great website. You can find a tons of things, not just skulls, but all sorts of 3D, uh, 3D objects and 3D characters, 3D portraits that you can turn around, find really great angles and really help you practice uh, your quick studies with this. And so that's what I did for this one. I did a few uh, skulls, different skulls, to just practice my hand and kind of warm it up before to do my actual study. All right, and when it comes to the actual study of the skull that I did, well, the first step is obviously a sketch. And when it comes to the sketch, um, I love usually to do a few sketches and stack them on top of each other. I like to do a more geometric sketch and then a loose sketch and then a final sketch. And this one, I, I went straight up uh, by simply doing some observation and doing the proportion uh, from observation. If you want to know how I did this, I have a video where I actually teach it on a banana. A banana can seem very simple, but if you learn how to sketch from a simple object, you'll be able to apply the same things on more complicated objects. So I'll put a link as well of this video in the description of, of this video. By the way, if you like this video and would like to see more of those, make sure to subscribe. I'll be uploading more of these videos on a weekly basis. All right, for step two, I, I put the basic value. So I went with a uh, dark gray background. Really important to always start with a uh, background that has some value or some color. It's going to help you to actually render any object that you do. White backgrounds are not great for this. And then I put the uh, basic shadow uh, with a, a texture brush. Adding a little bit of texture will also help to add a little bit of interest on this study. And once I did the uh, basic uh, basic shadows, I went and added the basic light. Having just those two things will help adding some volume to the object that you're painting without having to go into too many details. It's really just uh, a quick step to do to add the volume that you need and then it's just a question of adding a little bit more detail. All right, at this point, I'm adding the darkest dark, basically the occlusion shadow or the very, very dark shadows in the illustration. And that's going to make pop the illustration so much more. It's something also that can be a treacherous in a way that if you put those dark, dark too soon, you're gonna end up with something that's gonna look either flat or just uh, very too, too dark and a little bit muddy. So that's why I, I like to add the darkest dark at these steps. It's going to just, Add the contrast that you need to add the volume that really is going to make this object look like it's a real 3D object. At this stage, I'm adding a little bit of texture on the background and I want to give a tip to everybody here. Uh, I see a lot of people adding a lot of texture on the background sometimes and you have to be aware that if you put texture on your background, it's going to create contrast depending on how the texture is sharp or not. And that contrast will give uh, too much interest. It basically is going to take out the eyes of the viewer from the subject that you're painting, in this case, the skull. So when you put a background with some texture, make sure that if it's sharp texture, that you blur it a little bit. This way, your actual main characters, or in this case, the skull, will pop a lot more on the canvas, making it the actual focal point of your painting.
And that's it for this video. I hope you liked it. It was a quick, fun study to make. And if you want to participate into the next paintable challenges, you can join the Discord community. I'll put a link in the description of this video. And if you want to continue to learn with me, you can do two things. You can either subscribe or join the Digital Painting Academy, which I'll also put a link in the description of this video. And for the rest, I'll see you in the next video. Happy painting, guys.